All right. So um, let's dive into chapter 14 and uh, it's the digestive system. It's kind of a cool chapter. Most students underestimate this chapter, so be aware. Most students think, oh yeah, I know the stomach, I know poop, you know, whatever, but uh, there's a lot to it. Uh, it's not just, you know, chewing and, and pooping. Um, so let's take a look at um, the basics of the digestive system. I'll kind of, kind of walk you through how your book presents it. Um, the first pages of the chapter show you all of the major organs and kind of compartments that are related in our digestive system. Uh, 101, you got to know the organs, that, that's basic. So you should be familiar with those from the first couple of chapters where we did a body overview here. We're going to look at the, sp the specific functions um, in a lot more detail. So be familiar with those, obviously. Second, um, you should be familiar with the different layers and um, kind of uh, tissue layers of the digestive tract is what I'm trying to say. So um, in other words, if someone were to cut you open, they're not just going to see, you know, the spaghetti-like uh, intestines in there. There's all of these layers of fat and connective tissues that are linking everything together. So it's important to understand that. And that is what the diagram there is on page 402, showing you the mesenteries, showing you the um, greater and lesser omentums, very important to understand. The diagram on the next page, 403, is showing you a general cross-section of the tube that your food passes through, your, your actual alimentary canal or, or um, GI tract. And there's several different layers, kind of like we had the different layers in the cardiovascular system. You had your tunica intima, media externa for your blood vessels. You're going to see the same pattern here. You have this inner layer, this next layer, next layer, and then an the outside layer. Not all parts of the digestive system have all of those layers, but it's important to understand what they are and why they're important. Next, we'll start with the beginning of digestion, which is in the mouth, all of the actions that are in the mouth. You have your saliva, the enzymes in the saliva, you have your teeth, you have your tongue, and how all of those things mix and turn the food. The act of swallowing or deglutition, um, that's for you on page 405, and you can di you know, do a flow chart of that. It's pretty, pretty basic. The, the big thing is that the, the initiation of swallowing is voluntary, and then after it gets back past the uh, back of your tongue, then it's involuntary, and you're no longer in control of what happens to that food. That's when the autonomic nervous system takes over. Then you get into the stomach, the different cross sections of the stomach, the different regions of the stomach are there on page 406 and 407. Uh, actually on page 407 you get to see the gastric pits and all of the different specialized cells in the gastric pits and how they work together to produce hydrochloric acid and pepsin, which are the major um, kind of active molecules in the digestive process of the stomach. Then you get into the small intestine. The major role of small intestine is absorption, so understanding how that takes place, understanding the importance of the villi and the microvilli and the lacteals, all very important in understanding how the digestive process takes place. And um, kind of wrapped into um, where the small intestine is in the body are some accessory organs like your gallbladder, your liver, and your pancreas. And again, they're called accessories because you're digestive food doesn't actually pass through them. They're just kind of there to help in the process. So understanding the flow of bile, that's diagrammed for you on 410. And then understanding the actual absorption process. In other words, how do those ends, or how do those food molecules, the food that you just put into your mouth and swallowed, how do they actually get into your blood? How do they get to where they need to be? And that is diagrammed for you on page 411. Carbs, lipids, and proteins are all absorbed differently, and it's important to understand the difference between them. Finally, the large intestine um, and the role of the large intestine, how that structure is different from, say, the small intestine and the stomach. Their structure is always related to the function, so it's important to understand that. Um, lastly, how is digestive controlled, and it's all controlled through a kind of internal brain that you have in, in your, your gut, so to speak, called the enteric nervous system. It's a branch of the autonomic nervous system, so it automatically does stuff for you, and um, it's controlled locally. In other words, your brain doesn't need to be worried with ex exactly when, you know, um, peristalsis is happening or exactly when the different valves and sphincter muscles are being relaxed. That's stuff that your brain doesn't have to be concerned with, so your, um, your enteric nervous system kind of takes care of that. The second half of this chapter is all about nutrition. And you see the 
food pyramid there, it is um, incorporating exercise. It's not the traditional pyramid uh, that some of you may have learned in school. And in fact, it's even changed since this book has been published. Now it's a plate. It's called My Plate as opposed to My Pyramid. And it gives you the dietary guidelines for what every single plate you eat should look like. Um, about 50% of it should be um, carbs and protein, and the other half should be um, fruits and vegetables, pretty much. It's basically a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. Um, and then dairy for drinks. Anyways. Um, then the next little section gets into how the nutrients are metabolized. You should be familiar with the basics. So in other words, um, the steps that are diagrammed out on page 419, step 1, 2, 3, and 4 of that picture, you should understand. Um, am I going to ask you exactly how many CO2 are released from the citric acid cycle? No. So you don't have to have that diagram memorized, but you should be familiar with what is actually um, each step of carbohydrate metabolism and um, kind of what happens in each step. Uh, you should understand that different molecules can turn into glucose or turn into glucose substrates to be used like glucose by our cells, and that's what page 420 is for. And 421 is showing you how lipids or triglycerides are broken down. And then towards the end of the chapter, we get into some metabolic disorders like diabetes and obesity and how they affect our body. Very important to understand that. Body mass index or BMI, that chart is there for you on page 425. It shows you your weight in pounds, your height in what is it, feet and inches, and um, you want to be in that red zone. Um, although if you're in the low end of the green zone, that's okay. Um, but if you're in that um, yellow zone or even if you're in the blue zone, um, you could be living an unhealthy lifestyle and you may have to make adjustments. Um, BMI is not the only measurement for having a healthy weight. In fact, the BMI chart is slightly biased. If you're very, very tall or very, very short, it's probably giving you a weird, um, weird, inaccurate reading. So just be aware of that. The last little section of this chapter is about how body heat plays a role in metabolism. And of course, there's some feedback loops since we're talking about body heat and homeostasis. So you have those little feedback loops there on 428 and 429. And that wraps up the chapter. So please let me know if you guys have any questions. Keep up the hard work. This and two more chapters to go. And then you're free of this class forever. Uh, darn, right? Uh, it was fun. So let me know if you have any questions. See you guys later.